Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I would like to explain the architecture of Apache Spark. I will segregate this topic into three different categories. Okay, first of all, we will try to understand what is Spark ecosystem. Okay, Spark ecosystem. Like what all interconnected components we have in the Spark. Second thing, we will go a bit deeper and we will try to understand the working of working of Spark architecture. Okay. And the third thing, we will talk about the clusters. Okay. So, I will start with the first one, the Spark ecosystem. Okay. I am trying to explain each of the components here so that it will be very helpful for you in the interview to explain the architecture in detail. Okay. And it will solve a couple of your interview questions, believe me. Okay. So, what is Spark ecosystem? So, I will segregate this ecosystem again in three different layers. The first layer will be my high level APIs. High level APIs. Okay. Now, in the high level APIs, you can consider these items like your data frames or data set or you can say streaming. You can say ML libraries or you can say graph, right? Excuse my writing, yeah, graphs, okay? So for the Spark, these are very high level APIs, right? But under the hood, okay, in the Spark, these high level APIs will be converted to the low level APIs. And when I say low level APIs, it means it will convert this data frame. I am talking about the data frame specifically because I have worked on the data frame and the data set and the streaming thing, right? Again, it will create a data frame. So these data frames, okay, these data frames will be converted into RDD inside low level API. And these RDDs will be again converted, I mean, will be executed or converted you can say not even executed will be created based on the different low level apis now what is low level apis your python internally your java your r language your scala you know right you can use any of these languages to develop your spark program that's where it will convert this rdd data uh, these data frames to rdd and rdd to their respective program. Now why, what is the need? We will talk about later. Don't worry. But let me just explain the ecosystem first. What all things involved in it. Okay. Now after this, once this program will be uh, converted into these level languages, right, or compiled, then the third level inside it, you can say, is known as Spark Compute Engine. Now what this Spark Compute Engine will do, it will read this code, okay, and based on this code, it will create these things. First of all, a job, then a stage or a task, anything. Okay, it will create all these things and once this, these all things are ready, it will go and ask Cluster Manager. Manager to give me the resources and it will talk to cluster. Okay, these are my resources, these are my executor or worker nodes. You can say not executor, think of a worker node. Okay, so based on the code, it will request from the cl uh, cluster manager and it will ask for the required node to run our program on a very high level language, uh, on a very high level 
picture you can think your code works in this fashion okay now when i say high level api right to get or to reach to this level of api right you need a command i mean when i say you need a command it means when you start running your code you are actually hitting one of the command of spark known as spark submit okay this command will check what exactly you are dealing with now since now you are working after this in the in the next layer right so this is about the first layer the high level apis okay now the next layer the low level api means this spark submit okay will create one more component called spark context now what is context right so nowadays we don't have to create this spark context whenever we try to run our spark application right but earlier i mean uh, maybe around spark 2 or some somewhere i don't have the exact version number right but in the initial versions of spark you have to define the spark context before running your code and you have to tell the uh, cluster that okay my spark application context belongs to python belongs to java belongs to r or belongs to scala right so based on the language it will create the context either it is it will be a python context or a sql context or a java context or a r context right whatever it is that's what is currently it's doing but everything is under the hood we don't have to worry about spark context okay now once this spark context is done spark submit is done right here when it will go to spark compute engine right you know that i said that this will create or understand these three things these terminologies we'll talk about this later but okay now how it will be created based on a based on a lineage graph okay based on a lineage graph you can think of or you can think of a basically a query plan okay it will create a query plan like what will be our set of commands on this data right so based on that commands it will create a query plan don't worry i'll go in detail on all of these items it's just a ecosystem on a very high level uh, uh on a on a very high level i'm i'm talking about these terminologies as of now right but we'll go into the detail no don't worry just as of now just just think of these things as a terminology side right? like your apis what kind of api spark supports right uh, uh, what what kind of commands it actually run inside it right so these are the commands correct and uh, when it go to the cluster manager so there are different ways okay to manage your cluster i can say okay so system basically in in spark right there are there are different ways by which you can support your cluster manager okay so one way is your stand alone okay we generally do it in our local browsers and all the other one is like mesos uh, generally we don't use the most important manager we use is yarn yet another resource negotiator okay we use this one yarn and the last one is none other than kubernetes okay so cluster manager right supports or or you can say this cluster manager is of any of these types okay so i hope you you got some idea of spark ecosystem right till now let's go into the detail now how this ecosystem is actually works in the spark okay so now i am moving ahead with my second part okay so in the second part i will start from the very basics okay let's say as a developer right as a developer you created one notebook okay this is your notebook data bricks notebook now there are different cells 
in which you have written the code okay now these cells right basically these cells will be treated as a application okay these cells will be treated as a application now but for whom for spark okay so now we need to execute these cells okay so as soon as you will attach one cluster right you, you need to attach one cluster to run your program right so what you the, the first thing you will do before to run this notebook is to attach a cluster okay we didn't talk about cluster development so i'm just talking about the spark development okay so you will attach a cluster as soon as you will attach a cluster right and you start your cluster the first command it will execute is a spark submit okay this is the command which actually hit or this is the first command which been hit by your spark or which been which is being invoked by the spark what it will do it will start the cluster okay as soon as it will start the cluster right we know the cluster uh, basically has two components okay one is driver and the other one is executor okay so it will as of now it will take this reference of this driver okay the driver number you can think of okay now this driver will start and you start running your notebook it will know the context of the notebook that is called spark context it means in which language you are using it okay is it a sql is it a java is it a python whatever it is okay now once the spark sub context is done this this command being internally run by spark what it will do you will start running these cells okay and based on this cells right it will start creating your query plan which i talked earlier right okay so this query plan will have this cell execution plan let's say in this cell the first cell you have created a data frame so first first activity in this particular uh, query plan or in the spark we call it dag okay in this dag is your creation of data frame the second command will be once the data frame is created you want to do some filters in the next cell you are doing some filters it created another it, it just started making this query plan right in the dag okay so the next step will be filters after that in the next cell you have done select you want to select only few cells or few columns once this is done you are performing some group by once it is done you are doing some joins so whatever functions you write here in these cells right based on these functions it will start creating the dag okay now you must be thinking what is dag so the full form of dag is directed a cyclic graph okay directed a cyclic graph so what what this directed a cyclic graph means Let, let's try to understand little bit more in this one okay what this rdb uh, sorry what this directed cyclic graph means okay now to understand this directed cyclic graph understand the words right first of all let's divide this word the word is directed okay so let's go with the directed word what this directed means okay so the directed mean each operation okay or each function which we talked about right is representing or 
is represented as a node in the deck okay this is called node okay this is your directed which indicate the direction right how the data is flowing that's from from this uh, or, or in this way they have come up with this word right directed where our flow of data is directed and how it is directed based on these operations now what is acyclic okay acyclic means the DAG will ensure that there is a clear non-circular order in the operation okay or in this graph so there is no circulation for sure there is no loop okay no circular execution you can say so there is no circular execution that's where this acyclic term will come and the graph anyways as you can see this set of operation in the spark job is represent a graph right where node is operation and edges represent the flow of data so that's where the graph term will go so now you must be clear right why it is called DAG directed means it is showing the direction of flow acyclic it means there is no cycling inside it there is no loop inside it and graph right because it represent no uh, nodes and edges nodes means operation edges means the flow of data okay now why spark create this DAG right we need to understand right we understood that it will create the DAG based on our operation that is true but what is the use of it right we, we need to know the use why right always go behind this why question why we need it right so the first reason is the optimization okay now how it optimize this uh, execution right the spark execution so what DAG does is DAG allows sparks to analyze this operations okay they will analyze the analyze the operations or these functions okay and they will think if the order is correct or not okay so they will check the order of execution of these functions if they are not proper right they will reorder them okay and they will also skip the unnecessary steps always remember this okay so they will skip the unnecessary steps they will reorder the execution to improve the performance so this is the first reason why they use DAG the second reason is the most important reason which is known as fault tolerance okay now why or how it helps in the fault tolerance that is also a question right this acyclic nature of DAG is crucial right in the fault tolerance so let's see as I said this is node okay and this is the flow of graph or flow of data right if any of this node got a failure let's say this node got a failure now what spark will do spark can rerun only the affected part right it can simply rerun this part right because it has the previous state within with it so it will simply take this state and it will just rerun this code and the rest of the flow will be fine and if these nodes are working or these nodes are running on a separate workers right then then it will be a, a, a good opportunity for spark to even uh, it will allow that just because of the failure of one node the other nodes are not impacted right and you just have to rerun this particular node right we'll talk about it, how data is divided into particular nodes and, and the particular executors and all right but just think that it will help you for your fault tolerance and the third important thing is parallelism as i said right parallelism you can say right because spark yeah you know right spark internally works on sp uh, your uh, manager and worker uh, kind of a framework right we have one where they where we have one driver and several executors right so since there will be a several executors right you can throw your tasks parallelly onto those executors and you can ask spark to run or you can ask cluster to run all these tasks in parallel right 
so you will have a great uh, computation environment right distributed computing environment with you so these are the features will be provided by the uh, dag right because based on this task only you can understand if this can be parallelized or not right so this is also an advantage of dag right you must be thinking how come it it helps in parallelization but but these task actually helps them to understand if this this can be done uh, in parallel or not we'll talk about it how how actually it helps but this is but this is the place from this dag only you will be able to understand the cluster will be able to understand if you can do it or not okay so let's go back to the state where we were when we are defining the uh, this architecture right so now we are fine the dag is created okay till this process we are fine let me just cleanly mention this process again so first of all our uh, submit command will work okay submit command will work it will create a uh, context again this context will create your query plan which we call generally dag okay once dag is ready you will find three things out of it okay again those three things which i referred earlier the with the cluster with the spark computing unit right job task and stages so this dag will help you to understand what all our jobs we have in our program how many uh, basically stages we have in our program and how many jobs we have in our program once these things are identified by the spark now now the spark will actually or, or the driver program will actually go to will go to the resource manager okay resource manager and it will ask that i have these many task i want this uh, with some set, uh, with some specific uh, numbers right it will ask the resource manager that i want an executor with uh, let's say 10 gb of memory i want uh, total five number of executors and i want um, cores will be i want basically two cores or three cores of executors you can say okay or the cpu cores i mean it's not executor my bad i want these information or this much amount of storage right so what resource manager will do it will go it will check in its cluster now it will go and check in cluster right and it will give the required worker nodes to this driver program once it is being given to the driver program they will be uh, based on one of the ids right they have their separate ids each worker node will have their ids okay these ids will be linked to the driver program okay and based on this driver program driver will be able to get the regular updates from these customer these worker nodes okay so now we are clear like how our job will run in spark uh, architecture right but we didn't talk much about the cluster okay so let's go to our third stage now now let's try to understand how what is what is there in the cluster how it gets created what all configuration we do right so if you i'll just paste one screenshot here okay if you see this screenshot this is the screenshot i took from my databricks environment where i have created one of the cluster if you see here when we create a cluster actually we need to find we need to decide like what is the mode of cluster and all right but i'll not go in that particular part right basically we use shared cluster for our development and job clusters for running our code in the production environment we'll talk about in some other lecture but i will talk about the major parts here right so whenever you create one cluster right you will actually give or you need to actually pass the information related to the driver and the worker right so if you see here we have passed some information here like first of all one driver we will be needing that is for sure 
and you guys will need always one driver okay but executor can be n number of so in this particular example i have asked uh, that i need maximum executor as 3 and it will always be minimum as 1 okay so one driver and minimum one executor okay and for each of them like for each of the executor and for each of the driver i will define the memory okay so here i have asked 4 gb memory for both of them okay and four cores now what is cores cores is the processor okay so i have asked four cores for each of them now since the maximum executor in case of executor we have said the maximum executor we need is the three right so any point of time while running the code based on the data or based on the complexity we can uh, use multiple questions or multiple sorry not question executors right so if you try to use these executors okay if you try to find out the total number of memory given by the cluster or the, or the system will be based on this number only so for one cluster 14 gb so obviously for three sorry for one executor 14 gb so three executor will be 50, uh, 42 gb and cores will be 4 3s are 12 cores so this is how we calculate the number of memory or the amount of memory which we have with us now i'll go one step back okay and as i said right spark application will go to the cluster or the resource manager and will ask that okay i need this this this, this amount of memory so it will give us right now we'll go to the driver is fine right driver is anyways fine but let's go to the worker nodes okay let's say i have these three worker nodes one worker node second worker node and the third worker node okay always remember right these worker nodes will have will have the jvm in it first of all okay so when i say jvm it is basically you can think of a uh, machine right so each worker node will have some machine inside it okay so let's say this execute okay let me give the name this is executor 1 this is e2 this is e3 okay now we have these three executors okay now always remember each executor will have a worker manager a worker manager each executor will be having a worker manager right now what is the use of this worker manager so each executor can have okay or each i can sorry let's not tell let's not say it's an executor let's say it's a worker basically not executor my bad okay so each worker have one worker manager and each worker can have more than one executors so this is executor one this is executor two same way here we have three executors let's say e1 e2 e3 here we have four executors i'm just giving an example okay it could be anything based on the number you have specified okay so if you, you are saying four cores there will be four executors four machines e1 e2 e3 and e4 and these all machines will be handled by this worker manager okay so this worker manager is responsible to handle all of these executors okay and this executor memory 
will not be this complete memory. So if I say this one executor has 14 GB memory and four cores, okay, so it means this 14 GB memory will be multiplied by the four cores, okay. I mean to say uh, th this can have some amount of memory, this can have some amount of memory, this can have some amount of memory, but it cannot be more than 14, okay. So this memory will be segregated based on the task and based on the required information. Okay. Now let's go inside this executor. Okay. So inside each executor, again, okay, each executor will will be. So let's say this is my executor one. I'm, I'll just take an example of executor one. Okay. So each executor will run one task okay now this task is defined from the uh, as i said right this task can be understood by the dag program right so each executor will execute one task right and this executor is nothing but the jvm always remember it's a container simple so in spar executors sorry the workers and the drivers everything is in container it has a jvm machine inside it so this executor will have a JVM machine and if we are running with the PySpar code, it will have a Python worker as well. If you are working with a Scala, you don't need this worker. But if you are working with the Python, you need a Python worker to run your Python specific code. Let's say you wanted to run your uh, UDF. If you don't know UDF, UDF means user defined function. Or let's say you wanted to install some kind of a jars, right? So again, Python related jars. So those will be installed at Python worker spaces. Okay. Apart from this, this will have some cache memory and this will have some IO memory as well. We'll talk about these memories later on, right? But 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 as of now, I think you can see that each executor will have these kind of things. These will be handled by the worker executor, worker manager, and these worker managers will be handled by actually the driver. Okay, so driver will be talking to these executor, these worker managers, and these worker managers will be talking to the executors, and that's how the communication happens here. Now we talked about task also. So whatever task we run, so task means the operations right into the DAG. So whatever these operations are, these tasks are, these tasks will be uh, pushed to each of these nodes and inside node it will be pushed to a particular uh, executor okay and that's where our program uh, our programs get executed so i hope this video will give you some high level of understanding and some some uh, internal architecture of uh, idea right internal architecture idea of spice bar okay so just post me your questions if you have any doubt i will try to clarify you more but uh, that's it for this video i hope this video will be helpful for you guys thank you thanks for watching this video